Welcome to the New Developers Working Group for November 2022. Um, today we have Galen Charlton with us and he's going to talk about Angular routing and um, if there is time to, uh, we can chat about other Angular or other issues, whatever you like. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera off and turn it over to Galen. Okay, um, I will go ahead and turn my camera off as well. Switch over to screen sharing. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. Um, so at this point, I would uh, like to first ask um, if the what you're seeing in my terminal window is of um, a color and size uh, that uh, you all can read. Um, if not, uh, I can readily change it over to um, a yeah, scheme that has a, a white uh, background uh, instead. It looks OK to me, but um, Jessica's saying it looks a little bit blurry. OK. Um, yeah, and I'm uh, also got a, uh, not a notification uh, that it uh, was uh, complaining uh, about network uh, bandwidth. Ah, okay. Um, all right, let me try an alternative way uh, of sharing and see if that helps. So one moment. We have had issues with bandwidth um, in previous meetings as well. OK. Yeah, it was blurry for me to start out with, and then it cleared up. OK. All right, so this one, this time focusing just on the um, terminal window. Is this any better? OK. OK, so yeah, in that case, so that means that we're going to do this uh, the truly uh, old school fashion. Um, you will have to imagine a, a web browser. Um, but what I'm going to talk about um, is the process of the Anchor uh, application receiving a URL, uh, and then uh, from there, uh, translating it uh, to the particular set of uh, Anchor components uh, that should be loaded. So in other words, routing. Now, if we go from uh, the starting point of what does the index uh, page uh, for the Anchor app uh, itself uh, look like? Um, well, there we go. That's uh, the entire REST app uh, client. Um, you know, just a few lines of uh, HTML. Um, no, but seriously, all that the, the index uh, page uh, is uh, doing uh, is establishing that, okay, for this localization, um, you know, in uh, English uh, US, um, Loading a, a couple styles um, for uh, JavaScript uh, lines uh, that are coming from open source uh, and upgrade itself. So the IDL um, uh, to draw, uh, draw a JSON translator um, and um, the WebSocket uh, you know, interface uh, code uh, for open source, uh, open surf. Uh, and then the rest of it is um, just the various bundles uh, for the Anchor app itself. Um, so, you know, ultimately, what's uh, what it's uh, saying is, you know, we navigate uh, to the index uh, page. Uh, you know, we, it loads uh, this uh, JavaScript, uh, and then from there, Anchor uh, inspects the rest of the URL, including its half and uh, URL parameters to figure out what to do and what uh, to show. So the starting point, once uh, it hits Angular code 
uh, proper um, is, you know, starting at the top of uh, a recursive chain and moving on down. So the very uh, uh, the first, uh, you know, piece is uh, the routing module at the very top of um, the staff client application. So a lot of this is boilerplate. Um, so we're saying we have an anchor module. Uh, we're inputting um, you know, code uh, to deal with routers in general, uh, as well as uh, inspecting routes. Um, as well as the resolver, which is involved in translating uh, the routes. And then the welcome component um, is kind of a default. Um, so if any of you had been working with making a change uh, to Angular, uh, to the uh, Angular staff interface, and you tried something and it completely went wrong, uh, i.e., uh, it didn't you know, there was a serious uh, compilation error or the like, and you ended up uh, at a welcome uh, screen, that's actually where that's coming from. Um, because, you know, by default, um, if it uh, gives up, uh, it will just try to display the welcome uh, component um, and give up otherwise. But, the other part of this route, and the routes uh, is just uh, a list of um, components, is a saying that, OK, let's see what we can match. And so staff uh, is at uh, the uh, top of this, and it's saying use anchors built in uh, resolution. And then the key bit, uh, and this is what um, lets you travel uh, down rather than listing all of your routes at the very top uh, and you know having hundreds of entries in this uh, file is the saying um, you know uh, I know I'm matching with the uh, with a staff um, there are other components of the URL and let's delegate uh, to this staff module um, uh, to do further routing. And then the rest of this is effectively um, boilerplate to activate that routing. Though one thing um, to note um, is an option that on, on same URL navigation reload, which means reload uh, via, uh, via component. And this bit is actually a relatively recent uh, change, um, but it's there so that you can do things like, uh, and some of you may recognize this very specific example. You can uh, go to the Anchor Acquisitions uh, menu, go to Load um, Mark Order Records, fill in the form, decide you don't like what you've filled in, Go back to the menu and uh, enter the you know and choose that link uh, you know, link again, and have it automatically clear and reset uh, the form. Because otherwise, by default, um, if you go to the same URL, um, Anchor will just say, "Well, oh, I already have a component loaded. I will continue to display it uh, in its uh, current uh, state." Um, but since uh, you know, uh, especially as um, became evident um, during some of the Anchor acquisitions uh, testing, um, there was a desire to have the action of going navigating to the same page uh, via the menu, causing you know a reset of that uh, page. Um, that's where that on same URL navigation uh, option got uh, turned on. So. The top level routing um, is um, basically kind of the, the better minimum. Um, you say, oh, I will recognize uh, the staff uh, piece of uh, the path uh, and then delegate it uh, further. 
So let's go ahead and explore uh, what uh, that delegation looks like. So the load children, you know, then said, okay, um, we are going to um, load the AL module. And this is uh, just um, loading a, a good chunk of uh, the boilerplate. Um, so stuff, a component, as well as uh, the uh, routing uh, module. And that's kind of it. So let's go ahead uh, and take a look at the uh, staff component. So the staff component, you know, when it initializes uh, itself, um, is um, you know recognizing you know that um, it needs to pay attention to uh, the router. So the router um, is something you can input uh, to access, you know the uh, anchor routing code and the route, uh, you know, which uses the, the activated uh, route uh, component is saying, uh, this is the route uh, that uh, you currently have. Um, and then, you know, you know what it's uh, setting up uh, during the net uh, is uh, a subscription on router events, um, looking for navigation uh, and um, and you know putting in a guard uh, you know for quote for get, uh, forbidden uh, navigation um, as well as doing things like saying oh we detected uh, that uh, your authorization token has or authentication token has expired um, let's tell the router to navigate uh, to the login uh, uh, page with a parameter of your current uh, path. Um, and, you know, what the prevent forbidden navigation is doing is uh, saying, oh, um, you know, uh, except uh, for the login page uh, itself, um, you have to um you know have a bounded uh, user session uh, in order to uh, proceed further but as far as the actual routing is uh, concerned if we go to the staff routing module itself which is um what you know you know have been delegated uh, to this is where you know, we start getting into more interesting things. So what we see here uh, is um, a list of routes. And the first one listed is um, the case of, okay, there's nothing else uh, to the route. You know, but, uh, the user hasn't uh, done anything other than navigate to you know, EG2 staff. Um, and then under that, there's a list of children that you look for. So the first child is um, the empty child. Um, that sounds like a Doctor Who episode. Uh, and that's a saying that if uh, no other specific uh, place uh, has been specified, redirect to the uh, splash uh, page uh, component, you know, what we know of as uh, the um, staff uh, you know, homepage. But if uh, we have more specific, uh, you know, pla you know, places, uh, you know, below staff, uh, to start um, digging in. So at this point, pack as a child uh, path is a, you know, the full path is a staff slash ack, and then just uh, uh, saying, oh, we recognize um, that we want to do something acquisitions related, but we don't know what yet. Um, so that's uh, delegated um, to this acquisition's routing that module. 
And then booking is another case of the same thing. But then we also have simpler routes where, say, for the about page or the login page, we know, oh, um, this is a, you know simple. We'll jump in and look at a, a specific uh, component. So the about page that component or the login page. Um, and then the rest of this is um, just uh, more uh, examples of you know, top level um, uh, components of the URL. So to step back a, a bit, um, what this is uh, saying in effect is, let's say um, you start work on a completely new piece of evergreen functionality um, that um, doesn't, um, really fit uh, under any of the other top level routes. Um, let's say for the sake of argument, um, you're beginning work on Evergreen's robot book uh, delivery module. By the way, one of you really should get on that uh, right away. It would be so uh, convenient. Um, but let's say that the management, uh, you know, for that you decide, yeah, it doesn't quite fit under circulation. So let's have a top level robot route. So what you would be doing is uh, saying, okay, um, add another uh, piece to this list, you know, you know, path robot, uh, and then the load uh, children in, uh, invocation of uh, whatever module, you know, or, you know, of a new um, routing uh, module. Okay. So we've done this. Um, let's go ahead uh, and move on down uh, the um, line. So, you know, because this is something that I should be pretty familiar with um, <laughs> after uh, so many months. Um, Oh, okay. And all right, that really was uh, a crew episode. Okay. Um, I'm uh, going to go look uh, at acquisitions and it's routing that module. So, what um, we have here is something that's uh, basically saying, oh, let us uh, go forth um, and you know, inspect uh, the next level down. So search provider, PO, and uh, so forth. Um, and then uh, iterate. So we can say, oh, um, PO module um, for PO. So let's keep going down. Uh, and I promise uh, I'm, uh, I am, you know, slowly getting to, and, you know, you know uh, a more interesting part. So let's look at, you know, the PO, routing a module. So at this point, the complete route, um, you know, that we'd be looking for uh, is staff ACK PO. Um, ah, got it, uh, Jessica. Um, and then we have, um, you know, some routes of, oh, okay, create. So, you know, if you want to uh, create APO, you know, load the PO, uh, uh, create a component. But then let's look uh, to the next one of code in PO ID. And this is uh, something different. Um, so a path that component uh, that begins uh, with a code in isn't meant uh, to be navigated to literally. Instead, what it's uh, saying is you're matching on, you know, an arbitrary value that will get loaded uh, into a route uh, a variable called POID. And so this is how you get to do things like saying staff ACK PO slash one, two, three or four, five, six you know, whatever the evergreen purchase order uh, internal IE is. Um, uh, and so 
you know, that's a saying, okay, the core component, um, you know, that you would load is the PO component, but that beyond that, uh, you can have further uh, components if after the PO uh, ID, um, you're loading uh, additional bits and pieces. Um, so, you know, you know the, the default line item list or history or EDI or so forth. Um, but you can also, um, you know, have compound pieces in your path. So let's say you're, you know, you know, starting at APO and you want to look at its line item. Um, so line item here's literal, but colon line item ID. That's another, you know, placeholder uh, to fill in whatever line item ID with the actual. Uh, value, uh, and then, you know, detail, history, and so on as uh, various uh, components. Um, so that's one new thing. Um, another um, thing of note is can deactivate, um, which is set uh, to um, a class uh, called can leave PO child. Um, and so what this is uh, saying is um, before we deactivate or navigate away from this, let's go to this method up here, um, component can deactivate, uh, you know, uh, or rather check to see if the component has a deactivate method. And if so, run it. And the purpose of so, uh, something like that is to do things like implement um, a, a guard uh, if uh, against uh, dirty forms. So let's say in the line item uh, uh, line item item um, form, you've made a change but not saved it yet. The can deactivate um, uh, is where you can say, oh. Um, if the user wants to navigate away, don't let them do it, or, or at worst, um, pop up a warning. Um, you know, in case the form is still dirty and should be saved uh, first. So, you know, with that, um, let's go ahead uh, and look at the line item detail uh, component as an example. And so, what does a line item, you know, what does a component uh, is doing is, you know, it needs to, you know, bring in the activated uh, route. And the reason it needs uh, to do that um, is uh, it needs to query the param map, the parameter map uh, from uh, the route, um, and look uh, for the line item ID parameter. Um, and then based on what value it uh, finds, um, go, ha uh, go ahead uh, and set its uh, you know, internal state to that and load um, the line item. So, uh, and then going into, you know, various uh, code uh, to query, you know, the line item uh, service. But so the parameter map um, is, um, a key part uh, of uh, routing uh, because you know you will often need to look at uh, it uh, in order to you know grab um, you know dynamic the uh, set uh, URL um, uh, paths uh, you know you know uh, components. So. All right, so bear with me while I remember. All right, remember how to um, 
you know, a spell that, you know, right, remember how you know, a spell was something. But so the path that components are not, uh, of course, the only way that you can, you know, include some sort of uh, parameter um, in the uh, URL. So if we say, look at the line item uh, list a component, uh, another um, component uh, is the query uh, map. So you might, you know, recognize those as uh, query parameters uh, or CGI parameters, um, but basically the bits in the URL after uh, the path and after a question mark um, that give you a you know, set of names and uh, values. And so the route knows to query, um, you know, the router knows uh, how to parse uh, such a query parameters, um, and those in turn uh, can be, um, you know, inspected uh, during the initialization uh, to get it. So in this case, since the interface in question is bringing up a list of line items, um, you know, the limit and offset parameters, um, you know, are used to say where you are in your paging. Now, another thing to note um, is that um, the router um, is also uh, able to pick up fragments. Now, the fragment uh, in the context of a URL is uh, the bit after the hash assemble. Um, so, you know, they're often, you know, you know used uh, to, you know, uh, and a non-dynamic uh, web application, uh, the fragment uh, would be uh, a way to say, you know, please bounce, uh, when I load the page, please navigate uh, to whatever heading or element uh, has uh, that uh, page uh, ID. Um, so in this case, um, in this particular interface, the fragment is being used uh, to um, say, okay, here's a specific line item in this list by ID, and I want to focus on it. Now, um, you know, fragments could be used uh, for other things, like say, use uh, the fragment as one way of saying in a tab, uh, tabbed interface, oh, this is uh, the tab uh, I want uh, to uh, navigate uh, to. Um, so, you know, I'm popping over to chat uh, to double check uh, questions and uh, comments. Um, so to your point, uh, Stephanie, um, the Angular router is very much like uh, the uh, Spanish, uh, 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 Spanish uh, Inquisition. So um, expect it. Um, but I mean, more seriously, you know, the routing um, does offer a lot of uh, flexibility um, in the context of the staff interface as a single page app uh, to dim in, uh, and, uh, dynamically say what uh, you want uh, to uh, display. And in some cases, fragments um, would make sense. Um, and then to Tiffany's uh, point, um, what would you use uh, query gram map uh, versus um, prime map? Um, well, let me go ahead uh, and um, we will use VI uh, as the um, substitute uh, for PowerPoint. Uh, and uh, let me go ahead uh, and um, draw this out. So let's do an example of a, a full path. And you know the example I'm about to make uh, is um, a little artificial. Um, equals, uh, you know, so in the context of here, um, pram map you know, the pram map map is uh, for um, 
pieces uh, parsed out of uh, the URL path. So in this case, the path is everything uh, you know before the hash and uh, before the question mark. Fragment um, would be in this case, you know, the li. You know, it's a bit after the hash, and then uh, query, uh, you know, a prem would in this case be, you know, coming over as the name, uh, you know, value parameters after uh, the question mark. So, um, and you know, so uh, hopefully that answers uh, your uh, question, uh, Tiffany. Um, and uh, uh, I do want uh, to uh, note um, the um, thing uh, that um, uh, you know Stephanie has uh, shared uh, about you know how uh, to um, find uh, you know look at all of the routes. So I will go ahead uh, and for the sake of argument. See what this uh, looks like. So yeah, um, so as you know, uh, you know, as Stephanie uh, has uh, pointed out this, um, you know, a command, uh, you know, is a way of, um, you know, seeing um, all of uh, the uh, routes uh, in one uh, fell group. So um, to recap um, what uh, we've uh, covered uh, so far, um, we've talked uh, a bit about um, how the Angular rounding mechanism structures itself. Um, so it's based uh, on the notion um, that you start at the beginning of the, the path, match as much as you can. Um, and if um, the path that you've matched or the beginning of the path uh, that you've matched um, has a ch you know, children, you know, uh, you know, a child of router uh, vote via load the children, it will pop down Load that module and look uh, for its router, uh, and then you know inspect uh, its routes uh, to see what further matching it uh, can do below that level, um, and keep on going down uh, until it finds a full match. And then along the way, it's uh, gathering the, uh, you know together values uh, for you know parameters derived from the path pieces of the route, uh, as well as parsing um, values taken from the fragment and values are taken uh, from uh, the uh, query uh, parameters. Um, so then, um, you know, the router itself um, then uh, exposes uh, a couple of things um, to the rest of the application. So the router can be imported into your uh, component and queried uh, or you know, used. Um, so one thing you would be doing potentially is subscribing to router events if you want to do things like do a special you know, action when a user is navigating to a, a different um, piece. Um, but you can also import the active route itself um, to get information about where uh, you are and uh, what uh, parameters uh, of uh, any stripe are uh, available uh, to you. So, one thing to note is that the router component, um, if you make use of it, um, is itself um, a you know you know you know can be used to also do things. Uh, and the key piece of this um, is 
be you know navigate so that's just saying okay because of whatever action um, i want to tell the app go somewhere else and the navigate um, piece um, you know takes uh, an array of path components um, and, and says go forth and go there and you know the router will then in turn uh, inspect um, you know the route that you've uh, said uh, to go to um, to figure out uh, which uh, you know component or components is ultimately going uh, to be uh, dealing with it. And you know, one thing to note is that the navigation you know can say, oh, uh, I also want uh, to um, tack on a fragment of value uh, to uh, this um, list. Um, and um, it uh, can also be used uh, to tack on query uh, parameters. So, you know, Navigate um, is going to be your friend um, for all cases where you want to have uh, the app take uh, the user somewhere um, when it's not uh, just uh, a direct, um, you know, users are clicking on uh, a uh, link. But that said, links um, are also um, special in a sense of um, generally what you want to be doing in your templates um, is if the destination um, is just uh, a you know another piece of um, the application, um, rather than using href. Uh, to specify the destination, you're you know, you're uh, instead using router link, um, and that's the signal to anchor to say, oh, we're not meant uh, to reload the page or treat it as a typical uh, URL navigation. We're instead uh, saying um, to keep it all in house uh, within um, Anchor's uh, router. So. You know, we can see um, something, you know, the router link, you know, does have a lot of things where it does uh, act similar to a normal href. Um, but, um, you know, it should be noted that by default, uh, the slash et2 at the very top is uh, assumed. Um, but, you know, things like go oh, record IDs that are part of the, the path, um, you would just in, uh, in, uh, interpolate in like uh, any you know anything else uh, in the template, um, but also a nice thing uh, about router link is that um, it is also um, able to uh, appropriately uh, deal with target equals say blank uh, to open a new window. So if you uh, instead grab uh, for href uh, instead um, you know when are you using it um, it's basically for those uh, things that are true external links like say the link uh, to the project homepage uh, from uh, the um, website uh, you know you know from uh, the about page uh, rather or in cases where say, uh, this example from acquisitions, um, the patron act purchase request interface is not yet Angularized. So in order to jump to the AngularJS, um, you're just doing a normal href um, to jump over to the AngularJS. Um, and to emphasize, router link um, is just uh, within the private uh, little domain of uh, the Angular uh, staff catalog acquisitions. So Angular does not know anything whatsoever about Angular JS. Um, so if you're bouncing from the Angular side to the Angular JS side, that's just uh, a normal um, href.
Right. Okay. So then a question uh, from Tiffany, if uh, you're using router uh, navigate um, you know, directly from uh, the code uh, to open uh, in a uh, new uh, window, um, I believe so. Um, but this one I will actually need to check. So I'm doing git to grab, um, oops, and I meant router dot navigate with uh, some more uh, context. Uh, and, uh, and actually, this is also good uh, for you know, showing uh, some of uh, the uh, you know, other things uh, that uh, you can uh, do. Uh, let's see. Um, Okay, so actually uh, for this, um, I'm not seeing anything uh, immediate, so I will break down uh, and check uh, the documentation. Oh no, checking out the documentation. Ah, okay. And the answer is, um, it's not, uh, you know, uh, at least at the moment, uh, you can't uh, do it directly. So it's not like you can say router navigate uh, and here's uh, a parameter called uh, target. Um, That's let me look at this thing out of. All right, so yeah, so this is um, what, uh, you know, how what you would uh, do it. Uh, and this is a saying, okay, in this case, we want to uh, explicitly open it in a new window. And so the router, uh, you know, can be used to say, okay, let me create a URL uh, path similar to if I were doing router link, uh, router dot navigate uh, directly, but instead convert it into a form, convert it into a serialized uh, form, um, prepare the external URL, which uh, adds the final pieces of uh, the path, and then just use uh, your uh, friend uh, window dot open uh, to um, pop it over in uh, a, a new tab. Um, so yeah, so uh, you know, upshot, yeah, we have to do it uh, the uh, long way. Um, you know, router uh, uh, dot navigate uh, is presuming uh, that uh, you're not uh, changing um, your tabs. All right, so another. Um, piece uh, I want to um, look at um, is to pop over to the uh, admin uh, interface, uh, because that's actually doing something uh, very uh, interesting. So the thing about uh, the admin uh, interface uh, in general is a good chunk of it um, are just the typical there's a configuration table in the database, just pop up a basic uh, admin page uh, that uh, gives you a grid uh, with uh, the values of the table um, and uh, the typical FM editor uh, to change it. So how does this uh, magic uh, happen? So if we look at, say, server admin, um, we look at the routes and, you know, by default, it recognizes, oh, you know, a splash page for uh, the home page. Uh, and then, you know, a bunch of cases where um, we're saying we don't need that magic because we need to do things directly. So, for example, the org unit type or the coded value map or the floating groups, um, those uh, all need uh, additional stuff that the basic admin page component uh, can't handle. Um, 
but then we get into things like, oh, for config card due date, admin page that component can handle it, um, but uh, we also want to, to plug in the field order parameter. And you know, so on and so forth uh, for all these uh, specific uh, exceptions. Ah, but then we get to the magical part, which is at uh, the very um, end. And by the way, um, if you're thinking, oh, it very much looks like it's going through the list of potential paths uh, in order and going with uh, the one that match uh, the first one that matches, that's exactly about what it's uh, doing. So this one uh, at the end of the schema uh, parameter and the table parameter has to be at the end uh, because it's serving uh, as a, a fallback. Um, and so that's where uh, basic admin page component is uh, saying, oh, you've given it the name of a table uh, by you know, Postgres schema and table name. Um, Let's go forth uh, and just uh, do the uh, very basic, um, you know, cable plus uh, FM editor uh, uh, component uh, to um, uh, to uh, to you know, uh, to, uh, you know uh, to a display. You know, basically, you could perhaps rename basic admin page component to boring admin page component. So. Um, I think that takes us to uh, about uh, 15 minutes. So, uh, you know, to sum up, we've discussed um, the basics of uh, navigation uh, uh, and routing in Agar. Um, we've uh, talked about uh, how the general structure works in the code uh, and how you can get at various uh, components of the URL, um, as well as um, you know, some of uh, the magic about uh, how it gets uh, mapped uh, to the components that implement stuff uh, to serve for the egg event that route. Um, so I think uh, at this point, um, you know, while there's of course more to say, uh, I think this is a, a good uh, uh, place uh, to stop uh, and then um, see if uh, anybody has uh, any uh, questions. Thank you so much, Galen. Um, feel free, uh, anybody that has questions, to turn on your mic or put your chat questions in chat either way. Um, I have a question. Um, <clears throat> so in the in one of like the routing module TS files, can you talk about um, uh, like when you sh uh, you have imports and then you have exports? <clears throat> Sorry, um, and mm -hmm. when when you should use those because I've seen some where they're importing like several different things. Um, is that because they come from somewhere else? Like they're not like like if it's in ACK, it's not natively in ACK, and so we have to pull it in. Is that what it's doing? Right. So this um, part of it, um, but it's also um, and you know, simply the piece so that um, you know you need to import uh, you know any components uh, that you need uh, that are needed to service uh, drought uh, routes. Um, so that's where things like the admin server uh, slash uh, component or basic admin page uh, component are being pulled in. Um, you know that uh, you know that you know any modules that will be either directly servicing a route uh, or via load the children, you're dele delegating more route processing uh, to those uh, components uh, need uh, to be uh, imported. Uh, and then the boilerplate um, at um, the you know, bottom um, is, um, you know, you know, the routing module is a module, so uh, you need uh, to um, say, you know, here's a class uh, that will be our module, uh, though it uh, doesn't uh, typically, you know, have anything, you know, inside of it. Uh, and then this ng model of it is also boilerplate. So does that answer your question? 
It does. And I also just realized I wasn't asking the right thing. <laughs> so you did actually oh, okay. you answered something that I wanted to know, but I asked the wrong thing. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking of like, um, so um, I was thinking, so like in line item dot module TS. So I was thinking more in the, um, the mm -hmm. module, not the routing. I'm sorry. That was my bad. Um, so okay. there's declarations, exports, imports, and providers. So it looks like providers, is that just any services that are in that group? Ah, right, got it. All right, so yeah. Um, right, so and like refresh. Yeah, myself. like the exports and the imports. Yeah. There, there we go. That's what it, that's what I was trying to say. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I said the wrong thing. Right. So uh, to do it, I'll say it out of uh, order. So the imports is, uh, are saying, you know, here are the you know uh, specific up modules uh, that this uh, module I'm writing uh, depend upon. Um, and so it's uh, you know in this case for things like uh, style of common is uh, a way of um, saying um, you know bring in all the other components that are bundled under a stuff of common. Um, rather than having to deal with a couple dozen uh, component level imports. Um, this is a saying that um, anybody who imports a line item module will get these uh, components exported uh, to it uh, by uh, default. Um, providers is specifically for services uh, that uh, come with. And then uh, I think the declarations uh, are um, you know, for internal use, but this is actually something where I'm a little of fuzzy uh, and we need to refer to uh, the documentation. So, uh, okay, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't want to, I don't want to monopolize this time, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so if I am working mm -hmm. in like patron requests, right, like that's a different directory than mm -hmm. line items, say. So, and I want to mm -hmm. reference brief record. Do I need to put the, do I need to like do something routing wise for that? Or can in my TS file, I just import brief record? I don't. Um, yeah, yeah, you can just uh, import uh, the component uh, you know, need uh, for a situation not okay. like that. Yeah, now that said, um, sometimes you do have to, you know, look at routing because if a given a component uh, is assuming that, oh, I will only be called uh, via a particular route uh, and it makes assumptions, then you may need uh, to um, adjust it so that if it uh, can be called uh, from multiple routes um, to make sure it's looking yeah, that it that attacks uh, its uh, that situation and does whatever it needs to to uh, figure out its um, parameters. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so it looks like um, Stephanie, you have uh, something if uh, you want to uh, speak up. Sure. Um, I just wanted to throw this in there briefly because it's an accessibility issue throughout um, a lot of um, Evergreen and, and other Angular apps because the documentation gets this wrong. So if you're adding a link using router link, it's not going to have an href attribute, which means that unless you also add a tab index, it won't be available to people who are navigating using only a keyboard. Um, this is a big problem in the nav tabs uh, patch that um, we just threw out in the dev meeting yesterday. So uh, I'll just kind of leave this as homework. Um, and I'll be, you know, if you run into this and you're not sure what to do, feel free to ping me because I looked into this extensively. Um, but uh, we have a lot of spaces in the documentation where Angular and Angular Bootstrap sort of recommend that things be links when they should, in fact, be buttons. Um, and this page that I've linked there is kind of a good decision tree on which to use. But keep in mind that if you're using the A tag and it doesn't have an href, it's not going to be accessible via keyboard unless you add a tab index. Does that make sense? 
Stephanie, would you be able to um, like write up like just like a sample uh, bit of code showing what it should look like in order to work, and then we yes, can add that and into our documentation. Yes, and I will. I'm, I'm working on an entire document of accessibility uh, tips awesome. for developers, and that's like the first thing that I put in there. I will share that. Cool. Um, we can we can link that as soon as you're ready. We can link that um, even if it's in a working stage to the uh, for sure. developers wiki. Will do. Great, awesome, thank you. Um, and thank you so much to Galen for this. Um, I will stop the recording if I can figure out how to get back there again. <laughs>